JWST finding the first stars in the universe? Let's talk about it. Imagine looking back in time, all the way to when the universe was brand new. Astronomers have long wondered where did the very first stars come from? And thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, we may finally be seeing them. Let's start with what we know about our own star, the Sun. It's mostly hydrogen and helium, elements that trace back to the Big Bang itself. But what about all the other stuff? The carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, silicon, iron, and dozens of other elements that make up planets, life, and us. Those didn't exist at the beginning. They were forged in the cores of stars through the incredible process of thermonuclear fusion. In other words, the building blocks of everything we see around us were literally cooked inside stars long before our sun even formed. Stars like our sun, capable of making planets, belong to a group astronomers call population I stars. These stars are about 5 billion years old, making them relatively latecomers in a universe that's roughly 13 to 14 billion years old. In other words, we're late to the party. Two-thirds of the universe's history had already unfolded before our solar system even appeared. Think about that for a moment. The universe had already been running for billions of years before Earth, before life, before humans, even before the sun. Scientists realized there had to be older stars, stars that came before the sun with fewer heavy elements. These older stars, mostly found in the halo of the Milky Way, are called Population II stars. They have heavy elements at only a fraction of the sun's abundance, sometimes one hundredth or even one thousandth. Not surprisingly, their ability to form vibrant planetary systems is limited. They're more like the first workhorses of the universe, sturdy but not exactly fertile ground for planets or life. But here's the catch. Even the tiniest trace of heavy elements disqualifies them from being the first stars. If any heavy elements exist at all, it means a prior generation of stars has already polluted the universe. So, if we want the original, pristine stars, the very first stars, we need something different. Population 3 stars. These stars were made from just hydrogen and helium, the raw ingredients of the Big Bang, untouched by previous generations. Now, why haven't we seen these stars before? One reason is their mass. In today's universe, star formation tends to produce many low-mass stars and only a few high-mass stars. Low-mass stars can live for trillions of years, so if the first stars had formed this way, some should still be around today. But we haven't found any. That suggests the first stars formed differently. They were probably enormously massive, hundreds or even a thousand times the mass of the Sun. Why so massive? It comes down to something called radiation pressure. When a star forms, light pushes outward, limiting how much gas can collapse into the star. Heavy elements help resist that light pressure, but Population 3 stars had no heavy elements, so nothing was stopping them from growing unimaginably large. Massive stars burn hotter, emit huge amounts of ultraviolet light, and live fast, dying young in just a few million years or less. Their deaths as supernovae then seeded the universe with the first heavy elements, setting the stage for the stars and planets that came later, including us. Let's take a moment to imagine it. A star hundreds of times the mass of the sun, blazing with ultraviolet fire, forming out of gas that had never been part of a star before. No carbon, no oxygen, no iron, just pure hydrogen and helium. It's a star unlike anything we see in the modern universe, a true cosmic pioneer. Enter the James Webb Space Telescope. JWST is exquisitely designed to detect the light from early galaxies. Ultraviolet light from these massive first stars has been traveling across the universe for more than 13 billion years. As the universe expands, that light stretches into infrared wavelengths, the exact light JWST is tuned to see. And there's another trick of the universe that helps us, gravitational lensing. Some of these distant galaxies sit behind clusters of intervening galaxies. The immense gravity of the cluster bends the light from the galaxy behind it, focusing and magnifying it like a natural telescope. Without this cosmic lens, many of these galaxies would be too faint or too small to detect. Using these techniques, astronomers have observed a galaxy whose light shows no heavy elements at all, the best evidence yet for population 3 stars.
By analyzing the galaxy's spectrum, scientists look for chemical fingerprints, carbon, nitrogen, silicon, sodium. None were detected. This is groundbreaking because it's the first time we may have glimpsed stars made purely of the primordial elements of the Big Bang. It's important to pause here and consider what this means. These stars existed at the very dawn of cosmic time. They shaped the universe's first galaxies, emitted enormous ultraviolet radiation, and provided the raw materials for all the stars, planets, and life that came later. In a very real sense, they are the ancestors of everything we see today. Of course, science is careful. There are uncertainties. Could this be a gas cloud masquerading as a star-filled galaxy? Could there be some other explanation for the light we see? These are questions astronomers are still investigating. But if confirmed, this discovery could finally reveal the universe's first generation of stars, the long-sought Population 3 stars. What's fascinating is how this fits into the broader story of stellar evolution. Population 1 stars, like our Sun, are abundant in heavy elements, the kind we need for planets and life. Population 2 stars are older, with fewer heavy elements, and Population 3 stars were the very first, pure, massive, and short-lived. Studying them tells us about the conditions of the early universe and the processes that led to galaxies, planets, and eventually, life itself. This discovery was recently published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters by a team including Visible Hazlett and colleagues from the University of Toledo and Columbia University. It's a milestone in our quest to understand the origins of the cosmos, and ultimately, our own place within it. So, the next time you look up at the night sky, remember, we might finally be seeing the very first stars ever formed. Stars that blazed across the universe more than 13 billion years ago, long before our sun, long before Earth, long before life. And thanks to JWST, their light is still reaching us, connecting us to the universe's earliest moments. Until next time, keep looking up, because the cosmos is always showing us something new.